and that is uh, on uh, people facing street homelessness in London. 1467, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm proud that, that my team, led by uh, Deputy Mayor Tom Copley, Tom Copley, have been working with charities and other partners uh, and have quickly led the way to protect one of the most vulnerable groups in our city, rough sleepers, during this pandemic. We're now accommodating and supporting over 1,200 rough sleepers across 14 GLA procured hotels, with many more similarly accommodated by London's uh, councils. This work has meant that they can observe social distancing and other public health guidelines and stay safe. I welcome the, the back in the government's given to our work by both providing funding towards the operation and rolling out our approach nationwide. But you're right to highlight that there are still people sleeping rough. Our rich teams are still going out, and since lockdown began, the number of people they've seen each week has varied between 400 and 800. Around 40% are already known to services, but shockingly, most are new to the streets. Although some people have refused offers of support, many want and need accommodation. To meet this continuing demand, we've recently engaged an additional hotel, making over 100 additional beds available. This will uh, help uh, a significant number of people for now, but the government needs to commit to cover the cost of any further accommodation needed. I'm deeply worried that government now appears to be backtracking on their early commitments to protect vulnerable rough sleepers. Clarity is urgently needed on the next steps, both of those still on the streets and the thousands accommodated in hotels supported by City Hall and London's councils. The government must, must also do more to stop people ending up on the streets during the pandemic. Uh, council homeless and services need clarity from the government that they can and should be assisting those not normally entitled to help, including many non-UK nationals, and assurance that accommodation will be funded as lockdown is eased. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Math, for your answer there. Um, I, th I think all of your work on this is welcome, and this is a topic I, I last discussed with you at the last Mayor's Question Time in person as well. Um, you've clearly made progress, but there are still people obviously on the streets, as you report, between 400 and 800 people. And I'm very concerned also about new flows of people onto the streets. Um, the Housing Committee's report, Hidden Homelessness, found there were 13 times more people on any given night who were homeless but coping in other ways, sofa surfing, maybe staying on public transport, than there were people sleeping on the streets. Streets Kitchen, a charity doing outreach work, they are saying that they are busier than ever. And I think we, we do need to make sure in the short term we keep the capacity in the hotel schemes growing and growing as much as we can. Um, you mentioned the further support from government. Um, you've had no clarity and clarification, presumably, on that since the rumours a few days ago that they were withdrawing support from councils. Um, what are you doing to get more information about that and is there any way in which we as assembly members can help pressure the government to keep this going or we do risk putting many more people into harm's way yeah there's two thank, thank you for your, your points your questions so the, the two areas of concern where you can help me is one in relation to ongoing support uh, secondly is those new rough sleepers uh, and you'll be aware we have a far more sophisticated way of assessing rough sleeping like the outreach work we do than other parts of the country other parts of the country have the one count in autumn with the regular chain uh, uh, data, which is very accurate, and you'll know from the report that's been done by the concerns we have. And the third area is for those who've got no recourse to public funds. There is a real concern of what happens to uh, uh, them, and so any help in those three areas is appreciated. There's been radio silence from the government on those areas in relation to our lobbying. The good news, though, is, is the government have asked Dame Louise Case to continue her work, her excellent work in this area, and she's passionate about ending rough sleeping for it to be a revolving door. We are trying to we are trying to persuade the government to adopt our in for good principle which we've been using for our outreach work and our, and our winter shelter program that could really be a game changer to avoid the revolving door okay um so just moving on now to um private renters as you know the loss of private tenancy is one of the leading causes of homelessness and there's a big issue brewing now at the moment with renters who will be stuck with large rent arrears built up over the crisis I've called for an extension to the halt on eviction proceedings and I've said that arrears should be forgiven with landlords in need able to claim back lost income. I said this yesterday to the Minister for London. The New Economics Foundation, who you've worked with on renters' rights, and the London Renters' Union are also calling for rent forgiveness. So will you join us in calling for these two key policies? I think I was there first, but we're not going to argue about that. <laughs> uh, but my triple lock talks about uh, that issue. Uh, and also I've said to the government they should step up 
in relation to uh, support for landlords who, who may struggle. And, and one of the ways they could do very quickly is uh, increasing the London housing allowance. Very simple thing they can do, which would really help uh, fill the gap. But also they should be supporting those uh, landlords. Uh, and just, you've got to remember, there, there may this, be... Mr. Mayor, sorry, can I, I'm running out of my time, um, as we all do. Um, I asked you about extending the rent, um, the eviction proceedings ban, and forgiving, a rent, uh, forgiving arrears that have been built up so far. As far as I can tell, your triple lock merely extends the period of repayment for arrears. The principle here should be that renters should not be shouldering the burden of these arrears, that the government should be helping small landlords the way they help any other small business. Well, that's what I've, that's what I've said. But, but so what I've said is, look, so, so as far as the government's, the government's going to extend the period from June or no evictions onwards, they've got to amend Section 8, so arrears can't be used as a basis for the evictions as well. We're worried about that. But also they should be supporting those landlords, many of whom may have the, the property as uh, as uh, their, their pension and they've got to pay the mortgage, which will, which will continue in relation can I, to... Can I get clarity just in my last 30 seconds? You are supporting that the arrears should be cancelled for renters who have run into arrears problems during this crisis in the, in the, the current period as opposed to going forwards? What I'm saying is the government should be supporting those landlords who, who are having problems because renters haven't been able to pay their rent. Renters should be supported by the eviction period being extended beyond June. And there should also be a position where those tenants who've got rent arrears, that isn't the basis for which they can be evicted in the future. But you're still saying they should pay it back. I see, I'm not sure that that Assembly is member, the answer that I was hoping for, but hopefully Assembly we can persuade Barry. you in, uh, to change your tune in future, future weeks. Assembly member, well, by, by, sorry, you run out of your time. Thank you very much.